This now brings us to the very big issue of why. Why the secrecy? Why has this been kept away from the public all these years? Many witnesses feel that in the early days, in the 30s and 40s and perhaps 50s, that there was concern for how the average person would react to this information, that perhaps society was not prepared, either on a theological basis or on a social basis, an economic basis, for this information. I will not dispute that fact. I was a child in the 50s, just born in the mid-50s, and I do not know personally what the milieu was that could have affected how people would react. I will say that this is 2001 and not 1951. And in the last half century, that argument is no longer valid. The world has seen humans walk on the moon. My uncle was one of the designers of the lunar module that took Neil Armstrong to the moon. I don't believe anyone living today on this planet would be shocked to hear that there is life in the universe and that we have been visited. I do think that the reasons for secrecy evolved in the 50s up to this date, and they have much more to do with the economic order and the fact that the technologies related to these extraterrestrial vehicles as well as human breakthroughs unrelated to these extraterrestrial vehicles have given us energy and propulsion systems within the black budget compartmented unacknowledged world which would have a significant beneficial effect for the world but would have a deleterious short-term effect for certain special interests I believe these special interests would include the conventional energy uh, part of our economy, the internal combustion engines, the fossil fuel plants, gas, oil, coal, and ionizing nuclear uh, technology, technology related to nuclear power plants. We know that those technologies are already obsolete. I want to emphasize here that this is not a theory. We have testimony from people who have worked on these projects, within these projects, that can establish the fact that we have fully operational technologies which would enable the world to have no need for these polluting forms of energy. The first question, and this is probably one of the major reasons why this topic has kept, been kept quiet so long, the first question that one might ask even the man or woman on the street is going to ask, well, if there are these peoples from other planets and they're here visiting us, how did they get here? Did they have to come at the speed of light and take four to hundreds of years to get here, even at the speed of light, or did they come with using some other technology? Then where do they get the energy to travel these great speeds? And then we start to look into the energy. They aren't using jet fuel. They aren't using coal to get here. They're using technologies that the average guy on the street, the average physicist in a university doesn't have any clue about, and yet it's very real. Uh, in a few instances I can say there are clearly over unity electromagnetic devices, things that produce more electrical energy out than in. Uh, we are not in Kansas any longer. Zero point energy represents about 40 to 50 megawatts of power per cubic inch of space. Um, that's a lot of power. That's f uh, 4,600 million watts of power. And if you could tap it at will, then no one would have to sell gasoline or oil anymore. You would just tap into it. It, it, it would be it would be like taking and going out to the Great Lakes and taking out one drop and using it. it would, you'd hardly miss it. Yes, there is a history, a long history of over-unity systems. The, uh, for example, Nikola Tesla had one, uh, basically his big magnifying transformer that he had in, on Long Island was such an over-unity system. So this was one thing we established from the study of the foundations of electromagnetics. You are permitted to have electromagnetic systems that power themselves and their load 
and uh, you don't have to put any energy. They take it from the vacuum, the active vacuum. The bottom line of this is if we we'll initiate the negative entropy and let it go, it's just like you punched a hole in the ground and you got a big gusher of oil. You don't have to furnish the pressure and you don't have to furnish the oil. Here it comes. Well, if you have one of these units, you know, that's about 16 inches long and about 8 inches high and about 10 inches wide, then you don't need to plug into Kit Carson, the lo local electric company. It burns nothing. No pollution. Okay? It never wears out because there's no moving parts. What the people in power right now don't want us to know is that this free energy is available to everybody. In conclusion, I would like to state that this is a matter of the utmost significance to the American people, but also to peoples throughout the world. We can establish now that we are not alone. It can be proven that there are technologies which could give us a new and sustainable civilization. And we are certain that the secrecy surrounding this issue constitutes a threat to the national security and to the security of the whole entire world. This whole project of bringing this out in the open will probably take other people too. But myself, I'm 73 years old and I've had a good life and no regrets and I've loved this country and I've been a Christian all my life since I was about 11 years old and uh, so I believe God wants us known. I believe the cosmos wants us known. It still bothers me that uh, that uh, I've seen all this, I know all this and like I, I'm walking around like with the answer and nobody wants to ask the question to get the answer and it kind of irritates me a little bit. It's about time for them to just come forward and say, hey, this is it. It's a truth that the entire world has to be informed about and that truth is man is not alone.